person with my glasses. It's, 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 it's you know, it, it's a struggle. Right so today is the 28th of Sivan. It takes energy for me. Do you understand? I mean, yeah. this is... Yeah. Fourth of July. And uh, we're continuing with Shorish Mitzvah Tatfila. And we're in chapter two. We, we're almost, uh, almost a third of the way down. Okay, so we talked about everything being uh, a metaphor and a parable. But we have to add, he has to add here something more. And what he needs to add here is that because we're dealing with prayer, and in prayer we address God, so we address His uh, names, we use His names. So we also have to understand the metaphor in the names. In other words, um, what, well, let's see. We need to know one more thing. Hafshata. Another um, uh, insubstantiation, meaning that we're taking out of, out of the literal meaning. Okay. The fact that the Kabbalists associated each of the divine names with one of the Sfirot, so that's the chart that I gave you. So how does it work? So you have, in the, 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 he only brings the two famous ones, that Kel, Aleph Lamed, is in Chesed, and Elohim is in Gvura. And then, it's interesting that he doesn't bring the most important one, which is Yud Vavke. Yud Vavke is in Tiferes. And then, in Netzach and Hod, we have Havaya, Havaya Tzvakos, and Elohim Tzvakos. These are two names that don't appear in, 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 the, in the Chumash, but they appear in Tehillim yeah. and in other places. And <coughs> Yesod is Shakai, Shin Dalid Yud, and Malchus is Adni, Alv Dalid Nun Yud. So there's a tendency to think that these are one and the same. So when you say uh, Havaya, you mean Tiferes. He says, "Ena kavana al gufa sfira mamash k'mosh dimu ktsat mukubalim achoronim." He says there is a mistake among later kabbalists that they thought that it refers to the sfira itself, to the body of the sfira. Is what he calls it here. Ve'u dat megushemet meod sh'arei asfira imida achat pratit ve'ikoach elokish ne'etzal mimen okoach achesed okoach agvura. Why is this a very um, substance-oriented? Uh, approach, which is megusha, megusha. I mean, the, it's too coarse. It's too, it's too vulgar in a certain sense, because you can't address a sphero as a god. Even even if you use one of the particular names, because each one of the sphirot is a specific power of God, from which came the power of chesed, from which came the power of gvura of of might, and so on. But it says in the Patach Eliyahu, in the introduction to Kunei Zohar, that God himself is not from any of these forces. So how can you address it by a name of God? Even Chochma, which in Chassidus has a very special place, because uh, the Magid taught that based on everything that he had learned, but has sources earlier, that even wisdom, which is the manner in which the infinite resides in the world, first has to come through wisdom, which is why bittel, which is the um, self-nullification, is the uh, aspect, the, the psychological aspect, the inner aspect of chokhmah, of wisdom, why it's so important in Chassidus, because otherwise you can't have the infinite dwell in you. So even that, even that is not anything more than a sphera. And it has no correspondence or no, it's incommensurate with godliness itself. Even though that's where the infinite dwells through, it's still, it's, it's, it's just a power. It's just in the Tanya uh, next week. It says this. 
ואם כן, אי אפשר לומר דהשמות הנ"ל קאי על הספירות המעשה. So therefore we can't say that these names of God, these con- they're not even connotations, they're actually names, these are the seven names that we don't uh, erase. So they have holiness. The names of a sphere you can erase. <laughs> you can write chesed and erase it. You can write gvur and erase it. There's no such thing as uh, turning into something holy. So we can't say that these names pertain or refer to the sphere itself. Because when we read Torah or Tanakh and we find these names, וכשאנו קוראים בתורה שם מן השמות הידועים שהוא יתברך נקרא בהן כוונתנו. When we read one of these names, our intent, וכן הוא הפירוש באמת, and this is the true meaning of these words, על עצם האלוקה יתברך הבורא כל הנמצאים מהעין המוחלט והוא המצוי הראשון בשביל מציאותו מעצמותו. is to denote God himself, who is the first, uh, who, who is the first and who is the last, who is everything. And his being is from himself, הממציא כל הנמצאים אחר ההיעדר, and he is the one who brings everything into being out of nothingness, והוא לבדו שלא קדמו ההיעדר, and he is the only one that did not come out of nothing, nothingness. So, and, and this is the pshat of reading Torah. When you read Torah, you don't say, ah, now it's, now it's using the name Kel, now it's using the name Elohim. You understand uh, the literal pshat meaning is you're referring to God. Now somebody would ask, so why are there different names of God? <laughs> okay. No, but I mean there. Uh, so so the, so, so the sages already said no. It's not a connotation. This is an actual name. A connotation would be like saying he's powerful. He's wise. Well, we, don't, we have a connotation to the name. But that's that. A connotation is different. These are names that you can't erase. Correct. The, but they have the holiness. The word itself. A certain aspect of oh so if it's an aspect so why is it not different than the spheros the same thing oh yeah so what you're saying so, yeah, 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 yeah. so, so uh, he doesn't get into it uh, here but the, but the medrash says that al pulotai ani nikra acharei pulotai ani nikra that this refers to God's actions not to his uh, attributes. That's right. This is action. You could say that actions are ad- related but to attributes, but, but they're only related. But s- right, right. But here it's talking about that when he acts this way, he says, "When I act with din, yes, with uh, yes, then I'm exactly. elokim. That's right. That's when I act with compassion, then I'm uh, havaya. Right, 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 right. Okay, but but it's the action that's uh, and the action itself is directly attributed to God. It's not. It's not that somehow this is an attribute of God. It's, again, you could analyze it further and say every action is some kind of no, it's attribute. Organic. The, the action right. is organic, while oh. the other is... It, it, it's a revelation of God. Okay, yes. And when you say chesed, gvurat, tifer, so on, you're not talking about a revelation of God, you're no. talking about an attribute. Correct, the description. Now, to say, to say it more in, in a better way, it's that each one of these names in the end is referring to God himself. So, names even God, you mean these yes. seven names, yes, yes. so in the end, whenever I say one of these names, I, I mean all of God. I don't mean one particular aspect. In other words, when God brought down the hail on the Egyptians, and there he's definitely Elohim, he's definitely doing din, din. right? It's an act of din. But you can't see it though. There's, there's, there's another aspect to it. The other aspect to it is that by bringing down hell on the Egyptians, he's, he's, he's doing chesed for us. So, so which is it? Yeah, yeah. So each one of these actions is really a whole yes. representation, revelation of, of godliness. It's, it's bringing all of godliness in. I, so why is it different? Okay, so You're there's... It's not limited, in other words. It, right, right. It's not limited to one attribute. That's right. And now, when, you, when the Kabbalists want to say that, so then they have to say, okay, so even Chesed has Gvura in it, yeah, and yeah, it has yeah. Teferis in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but now you see that you have to play this game called inter-inclusion, yes. and it makes it much more complex, and you're not talking about one attribute anymore. No. You're, you're talking about a whole, a whole um, as a friend yeah, of mine likes yeah, to yeah. say, a bouquet of yeah. <laughs> meanings. <laughs> but you're, you're talking about a whole constellation yes. of, of meanings that come together. 
And that doesn't happen in the Torah. The Torah just speaks. Now still you could ask, so, so, so you know what biblical criticism did with this. So they decided that these are separate sources. That in one place they called Hashem Yud Kevavke, in another place they called him Elohim. There's, there's validity to that. Why is there validity to that? Because we see that Hashem uses different names, but it's not the way that they think it is. Rather, it has something to do with sending a complex message. Because in the end, there is a reason why sometimes he's called El, sometimes called Lokim, sometimes called Shakai, something. To uncover that meaning, you need Chazal. Even you could ask that question about the 13 principles of compassion, which is very, very important. It starts, Havaya, Havaya, kill. And you say, so why do you have to start with, I understand maybe you tell me Havaya, kill. But twice Havaya. <laughs> Yud kevavke, yud kevavke, then kel. So, so come, comes the Gemara and explains that this is before the sin, this is after the sin. This is revealing something. Mm-hmm. But you can't say that this is the same thing as sfirot. Sfirot are something else. There are particular attributes. Meaning, sfirot are like, a, uh, uh, um, I, I would say, an attempt to generalize. People would say it's an attempt to particularize, but I don't think it's like that. It's actually an, a, an attempt to generalize attributes out of actions in the opposite direction this by the way is, a, is an issue also with learning Talmud a lot of people when they learn Talmud they think that the uh, brightos, the external Mishnahs as they're called they are leftovers from the Mishnah they didn't go in no, that's, not, that's, they, they, that's why they're called bright because they're on the outside mean they're so why are they outside? because yes. when Rebbe put everything together yeah. But they don't remember, the, or maybe they don't know that the brightot are the source, not the leftovers. Like even when you're saying leftovers, I think I'm making a cake. And I have some leftover ingredients, but the ingredients are the source. The brightot are the source. Yeah. They are the passed down tradition of when people came to a Kohen and they asked him a question. Yeah, yeah. So this is what the Kohen said. Then Rebbe tried to generalize all, as many brightot as he could into a generalized principle called the Mishnah. So the Mishnah is the general and the right of the particular. Same thing the, the, the Kabbalists do. They, the Zohar, for instance, like Rashbi, he looks at the Chumash, he says, this act and this act and this act, what can I generalize from this? And then he comes up with the name of the Sphira. It's not him that came up with it, it's already David, King David already came up with, it, with the names of these field. And the Zohar comes and says, this is a generalized attitude of loving kindness. This is a generalized attitude of... So these attributes are actually generalizations. They're not particular. But that goes into a whole another topic. Again, this is important because we're davening and we're using God's different names. So we need to know that we're referring to God Himself. We're not referring to some particular sphere. Yeah. yeah. And this was a question that was asked of the Rosh... Well, actually, was the Rosh by asked of a, of a Kabbalist I think we even know who he was, but Rashba was the greatest um, uh, uh, of the Rishonim because he was, he was, he was more in, in certain sense than the Rambam because he had no, there was no controversy around him as far as I know. He led to some controversy because he was against Abu Lafia, for instance, all kinds of things that he did. But he was, you know, after Rashi, some people learn Tosfos, uh, some people learn Rashba. Rashba is, in many ways, more important than uh, Tosfos. Uh, although Tosfos is a better way to understand Rashi, but Rashba is not... Rashi replaces uh, Rashi. No, that's a, that's a Rashbam. Rashbam. That's his... Uh, it's a, yeah, it's his, uh, his, oh, right, right. his okay. grandson. Neither or not neither. Nedarim. Nedarim, yeah. Um, but then, be that as may, he was very. He was. He was really the the leader of the Jewish people in his lifetime. It was the end of the the golden age of of, of Spain. And he has chuvos, and these chuvos are unbelievable. I mean, really, they're learned more than I think any other chuvos, uh, except for when people, from the Rishonim anyway. So he has a series uh, of chuvos that he wrote with a Kabbalist in, I think, in Toledo, I'm not sure. And there he asks him, asks him the question, so when you daven, to which sphere do you daven? He's asking him basically this question. And he says, I don't daven to a sphere. Yeah, yeah. I daven to God. Yeah. So he says, how is this possible? Because you explained that every single statement in the davening is referring to a particular sphere. He says, that's all true. 
But when I say Hashem's name, be it any name that I say, He says, I am intent, I have the same intent, the same understanding in my mind as a child would. Meaning, I'm not analyzing things. I'm not trying to take them apart and generalize or particularize or anything like that. I just daven to Hashem. Because that's what all these names really mean. Okay, so let's end here today. Very nice. And uh, God willing, we'll continue tomorrow.